The course syllabus is an essential component of your course. It should be precise, clear, and accessible. A syllabus is often the first means of communication between you and all of your students. A well-designed, accessible syllabus follows universal design principles for learning and benefits all students. In this workshop, you'll be provided with the tools to help you create a well-organized and accessible course syllabus. I'll be your presenter today. My name is Amanda Smothers. Um, I'm the Teaching and Learning Coordinator in the Center for Innovative Teaching and Learning at NIU. Um, I'll take your questions throughout and at the end of the presentation. So if you have a specific question related to what we're covering during the presentation, um, feel free to post questions in the chat thread and I'll address them as they come up. Or you can wait until the end when I ask your questions and ask your questions then too. And in the text chat, just tell us what your department or division is, your role, are you an instructor, professor, TA, and what you hope to get out of this workshop. Okay, hoping to find that you're doing okay with your syllabi, great. And looking for ways to make sure all students get the information they need from your syllabus, great. All right, so um, one more thing that I like to do in my online synchronous classes um, is just kind of gauge the mood of the room, the online room. Um, oh, and Zach, you want to learn more about how to maximize the quality of your syllabi, great. Um, so what I do is a, a little check-in. So just share an emoji. There's a little emoji icon um, next to bold italic underline um, in the chat and just Select an emoji that best represents how you're doing today, how you're feeling at the moment. Um, and it can be, you know, positive or negative or neutral. So I'll start there. And this is a good way just to Kind of get your students to to get started in the class without having to talk too much, um, whether that be via text or uh, talking with their microphones, which they might be reluctant to do. And depending on the time of the day, they might be feeling a little burnt out or not quite awake yet. So getting the emoji is just kind of a way to to gauge where everybody's at so that you at least know before you start. So if you want to, you can share an emoji in the chat there. And as you're doing that, I'm just going to move on to the workshop objective so we can keep the workshop moving along. So in this workshop, we're going to discover some practical strategies uh, for how to define universal design for learning, to distinguish between non-accessible and accessible elements of a syllabus, and to use some basic tools and strategies to create an accessible syllabus. So what we're going to be looking at uh, first is universal design for learning. Um, and this has to do with uh, the why of learning, the what of learning, and the how of learning. So the why of learning is engagement. Uh, for purposeful, motivated learners, you want to stimulate interest and motivation for learning. Uh, the what of learning is representation. So re for resourceful, knowledgeable learners, 
present information and content in different ways. And then finally, the how of learning. This is action and expression for strategic goal-directed learners who want to differentiate the ways that students can express what they know. So universal design of learning, um, to provide just a bit of a background and foundational information, we'll just discuss universal design. Um, and universal design uh, hits at accessibility, um, but it's not focused on disability. It's focused on, um, on making uh, your course materials accessible to all. Um, and it's really about the overall design of instruction as well as specific instructional materials facilities, strategies like letter, lectures, classroom discussions, group work, web-based instruction, labs, field work, demonstrations. Universally designed curriculum provides students with a wide range of abilities, disabilities, ethnic backgrounds, language skills, and learning styles, multiple means of representation, expression, and engagement. And for a more in-depth discussion of universal design, I'll just post the uh, link here in the chat to their web, web page. So Universal Design for Learning, or UDL, provides a framework to create and implement lessons with flexible goals, with methods, materials, and assessments that support learning for all students. And um, this is just a reiteration there on the screen, but Universally Designed Curriculum provides learners with a wide range of abilities, ages, disabilities, ethnic backgrounds, language skills, experiences, and learning styles. Um, so learning happens in an interaction between an individual and the environment or the transaction between those two things. Um, it's social and contextual, and for that reason, it's important to understand how a person's knowledge shifts and changes as they interact with the environment. So a single class might include students who struggle to learn for any number of reasons, not just disability, including learning disabilities, sensory and physical disabilities, let English language barriers, uh, cultural barriers or customs, emotional or behavioral issues, limited access to and or experience with using technology. So what does this have to do with the syllabus? Why is this important for higher education? So often, as I mentioned before, the syllabus gives a first impression about what to expect from the upcoming learning environment. This is students very first impression of you and of the course, uh, and you want that to be a good impression. It's also an opportunity for each instructor to set the class climate, to identify specific learning expectations for our students, and to, to discuss options and accessibility, and to share with our students that we do have accessibility in mind. Um, and here is a, a syllabus planning um, resource for you on UDL. All right, so how do each one of these different aspects of UDL uh, connect to the syllabus? And I, I went over what these were before, um, but the affective network. So we'll start at the end and uh, all the way to the right and kind of work our way back. The affective network was to provide multiple means of engagement. So this is where we can outline the learning goals and objectives for our students, the relevance of the content, and any opportunities for choice within the course. Um, so in other words, uh, are they going to be given or how are they going to be given a choice for how they uh, demonstrate their learning in your course? So what options will there be? Strategic network is there in the middle. Uh, that provides multiple means of action and expression. So you can use the syllabus to communicate regular routines, to establish expectations, to outline the timing and format of the assessments and offer resources for the management of that information. And then the one all the way on the left here, recognition network, that provides multiple means of representation. So be explicit about the ways in which students can access their content. For example, will there be a textbook? Are there gonna be slides shared? Uh, course website, any videos? Uh, and where to find background information and multiple examples to help reinforce their learning. So shifting to uh, specifically to accessibility, um, we want to include in our syllabus resources and statements that address students with differing needs. Um, so the one that is required 
is the Americans with Disabilities Act statement. Um, we can also include, and I'll give you these links as well in just a second, um, producing, we've got a lot of resources online, but producing, developing, maintaining, and using technology is one, uh, bystander intervention statement, counseling and consultation services, disability resource center, the gender and sexuality resource center, our non-discrimination policy, and also the trauma services clinic. Um, so NIU's campus, we welcome all students. We're committed to providing a range of specific uh, student needs and accommodations. The U.S. Department of Hi Education and Higher Learning Commission requires that all courses have a syllabus that's made available to each student enrolled in each course by the first class meeting. Um, at minimum, regarding students' accommodations, all syllabi, at least one with, within the NIU campus, have to include that, as I mentioned, Americans with Disabilities Statement. Um, and within that ADA statement, you can also add a statement requesting that students with disabilities contact you regarding accommodation needs. Um, and they uh, make sure that they know that they do not need to um, divulge any disability um, specifics to you. Uh, the Disability Resource Center is where they would go for specific accommodations for their disability. There are other ways that NIU accommodates its students. As you can see with these statements and these resources, um, you could include a statement that says something about how student success is important to you, that any student who has any circumstance that might have some impact on their work in the class and for which they might require special accommodations contact you early in the semester so accommodations can be made in a timer. So let me give you um, these resources here. So here is our disability statement and our technology accessibility um, procurement policy. Oops. I accidentally shared that second one twice. Here it is. Oops. I don't know why I keep sharing that one. Um, sexual misconduct, uh, violence prevention, our counseling website, our non-discrimination policy, gender and sexuality resource center, and our trauma services clinic. Let me see if I can get that first one, it keeps Um, there's other statements to consider, including in your course syllabi, um, in addition to the ADA statement that's required. Um, so here are some inclusive statements for syllabi. Um, the NIU Office of Academic Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion established the online faculty toolkit where you can find a wide range of inclusive statements that are recommended to be included on course syllabi. And there is the faculty toolkit link. Um, the toolkit also provides some resources to nav navigate classroom dynamics and create culturally responsive teaching. So if we're thinking about accessibility in a broader term than just accessibility for disabilities. Um, so although you don't absolutely require or don't absolutely need to include um, these statements on your syllabus other than the ADA statement, um, they can help provide a dynamic educational experience that expands the understanding of differences um, in cultures and identities with respect, respect to the rich and diverse cultures represented on campus. Um, so statements that you can include would be an accessibility statement that would show your students that accessibility is a concern for you and important to you. Um, and it would also welcome students to if they um, run into any difficulties accessing uh, your course materials to contact you. Uh, there's also a multilingual student statement, a uh, name and pronoun statement, 
a student sexual misconduct policy, a statement um, towards um, or addressing undocumented students. And then there's a lot of other resources, as I mentioned, in the diversity, equity, and inclusion faculty toolkit. So accessibility means making sure that your content is available to as many people as possible, especially those individuals with hearing, visual, cognitive impairments um, who often use assistive technologies. Beginning on January 18th of 2018, NIU implemented a policy for producing, developing, maintaining, and using technology. Um, and that's in that list of resources. It's uh, NIU.edu technology dash accessibility um, slash procurement policy. So all electronic and information technology has to be accessible to people who have visual or hearing disabilities or who can't use a mouse or a keyboard. That applies to everything from online course materials to videos shown in class um, or assigned to be viewed outside of class to web applications like MyNIU to copiers and printers. So even if you haven't had a student who's blind, for example, or who has low vision or is part of hearing or deaf in a class, now is the time to make all of your course materials accessible and the syllabus is a great place to start. Um, because that is, you know, the foundational document of your course. Um, and the DRC, uh, Disability Resource Center, is there to work with you to help do things like caption videos, create accessible documents as well. So if you need a little bit more individualized help with those things, you can always use the DRC. They're, they tend to be um, busiest, you know, right before in the beginning of the semester, um, which is understandable. So, you know, if you want to work with them, um, you might have to wait a little bit at this point, but they should be um, available throughout the semester. Uh, so you want to also, when you're making your syllabus accessible, consider instructional uh, design principles. Uh, for example, reading order, how, which order do you want to present the information, what makes the most sense. Um, if someone's using uh, assistive technology, like a screen reader, um, you know, pay attention to reading order so that you give them the most important information first. Um, you could also uh, include an order um, alphabetically by heading. When you use headings, make sure that you're using styles so that they can be read by a screen reader and a student who is using assistive technology can navigate through the document rather than having to have it read to them in its entirety to try to find information that they need. Um, and I'll talk more about heading styles in just a minute. Um, also using table headers, alternative text for images, um, image files alone are not accessible, so there, there definitely needs to be alternative text or captioning for those images. Um, simplicity in design is preferable. Um, color contrast is an important accessibility issue, so making sure that you don't use color uh, for meaning, to, to convey meaning, for example, or um, that the color of your background and the color of your text has enough contrast to be readable. Um, and you can, so, you know, even if you find that your syllabus at this point is not accessible, um, it can be made accessible. You don't have to start over from scratch. You can fix those non-accessible elements to make it more accessible. And maybe you start with something like heading styles and alternative text, alt text first. Um, so you want to prioritize those things. If you only have a certain amount of time, you know, pri prioritize what you start with um, to make it as accessible as you can. And one way that you can identify accessibility issues as well, we have Blackboard Ally enabled in all of our online courses now. So if you upload your syllabus uh, document to your Blackboard course, you can make it unavailable or um, make it hidden from students at first uh, until you assess the accessibility um, and then look at the feedback that you get from Blackboard Ally. It'll tell you which parts of it are inaccessible, how you can fix those issues. Um, and if you're interested in learning more about, it, about Blackboard Ally, um, you can always contact our center um, and look at our, uh, I'll send you some information about it as well in my follow-up email. Um, let's see here. Uh, 
Okay. So there's also, other than Blackboard Ally, um, there are a couple of other things you can do to check documents. Um, there's an accessibility checker. There's a quick check and a full check in Adobe Acrobat X Pro, and we have license for that at NIU. So if that's something that you want um, on your NIU issued laptop or desktop computer, um, you can contact the Department of, of IT and they can install that for you. Um, and that has an accessibility checker for PDF documents on it. Um, so that's, and you can tag documents. So the most common problem with PDFs um, is that they're not tagged. Um, and so that would help you tag that, those documents. Um, and then there's also an accessibility checker a utility in Microsoft Word that you can use too. So let me give you some links for that. So here's one for um, using the accessibility checker for Acrobat. And then here is one for Microsoft Word documents, making those accessible to people with disabilities. So just a couple of resources there for that. Um, and let me make sure that I have shared. Okay, and then the ethics compliance technology accessibility um, link as well, because I don't think I've shared this one yet either. And I'll send these all out to you as well, but if you want to get started on them before I'm able to get my follow-up email later this afternoon, then those are there for you in the chat. All right, so one major thing that you can do for your syllabus to make it more accessible is to use styles in Microsoft Word, um, heading styles. And each um, word processing program has their own version of this. So if you're using Google Docs or you're using um, something else, they, they'll have something comparable to this. Um, but here are a couple of resources. Um, here's one on headings and then uh, built-in headings. And then here is one on a video on heading styles as well. So there's a document and then a video, um, depending on what kind of learner you are, if you need to see something um, in order to, to enact that. So basically you wanna use heading levels. Um, this will help your students navigate through your document. Um, so if they're looking for a specific piece of information, they can use their screen reading software or program to find that specific information based on these headings. And you want to use different heading levels. So you want to use heading one um, for top level headings. And then if there's any subheadings underneath that, you would use level two and so on um, just to make things easy to find for our students. And there's a default uh, format for these headings, and you can change that. So you can make the format whatever you want in the actual text before you assign it to be a heading. Um, and then you can right click on heading one, for example, and then change heading one style to match the text that you've highlighted in your document. And that way you can have it be in the format that you want it to be in, and it doesn't have to be in this, this kind of format because there is some there is an accessibility issue with the form, the default formatting um, for styles because it's a, sort of a light blue text color, which may not have enough contrast with the background. So making it black um, will make it more accessible for your students. So here is just kind of an example of what heading styles would look like. Um, and one great feature for students who you know, do not have a uh, visual impairment um, is that they can also navigate through your syllabus document more easily as well. So if they click on the navigation pane under view, they can see all of the headings listed in the navigation pane on the left. Uh, so then they can find the information that they need. They can click on the heading in the navigation pane and it'll take them to that 
spot in your syllabus document. So if they're looking for information about late work policy, they can click that in the navigation pane and then it'll pop up on, uh, on the right hand side in your document. Um, so you might want to just let students know that that feature is available too once you've um, formatted your document and that they can they can look at the headings there and find information and that might help cut back um, knock on wood on the emails that we get or the questions that we get about things that are already the information that's already in the syllabus. So take a look at that as well. And that's also a good way for you to take a look at um, once you've added styles that they are the way that the, you want them to be. And it's also a good way if you want to reorganize your um, syllabus, you want to reorganize where things go in the syllabus, you can drag and drop those uh, headings in the navigation pane to where you want them to the order that you want them to be in and it'll change it in your document too. So it's a lot easier than just going through and trying to copy and paste things and then headings can get messed up or formatting can get messed up. That's a, a lot easier way to just re reorganize your syllabus and to make sure that it's in uh, that it's got an organization that um, is understandable and easy to use for students. I used to put things in priority order of what I thought was most important. Um, and now other than, you know, the textbook information and stuff, which is always on the first page, I've put things in alphabetical order to make it easier for my students to find the information in my syllabus. And I've got a lot less um, emails from students asking questions about information that they could find in the syllabus. Um, so that has, has worked for me. So that might be something that you wanna think about as well. So just a few more tips for accessibility and documents, just kind of a quick, quick uh, overview here, and then we'll get to if you have any questions, um, specific questions for yourself. Um, so alt text is important. Any image, picture, clip art, chart table, uh, shapes, embedded objects, video, audio files. I know sometimes we um, especially for an online class, I like doing um, a syllabus overview video. Um, so we want to have some sort of alternative text, um, alt text for images and then captioning or transcripts for video and audio files. Um, so make sure that you have that so that anybody can access that information. Otherwise, you know, if you've got an image that conveys important information, someone who's using a screen reader is not going to be able to access that information, so it's not accessible. Um, same for, you know, video. If there's someone with a, with, you know, who's deaf or um, has a hearing impairment, they won't be able to access that information if it's not captioned. And the DRC can help you with captioning as well, um, or you can use something like Kaltura, which auto captions, then you can go in and edit captions. Um, or YouTube, which also auto captions. Uh, styles, as I mentioned, use the uh, your word processing programs built in or custom style menus to create titles, headings, lists. Um, whenever possible, use those heading styles in numerical order. Um, so heading style level one should be, you know, the first heading style and then any subheading below that would be level two. Subheading below level two would be level three. Um, and also when you're creating lists, try to limit your use of fancy or, or customized bullets. Um, round bullets are recognizable or read by screen readers, whereas different kinds of ones like a check mark or, um, you know, some little picture uh, might not be recognizable by screen readers. So just be aware of that. Um, also make sure that you specify column header rows in your tables. If the table breaks across pages, make sure that you've checked the box to enable the header row to also appear on each new page. Um, and make ensure that there's a simple structure of rows and columns. Um, and I'll send uh, a document um, or a resource about accessibility in tables. Um, if something can, the, the easiest way to do this is if something can be, if information can be presented linearly 
rather than in a table, try to do that. If you absolutely need tables, then make sure that they are accessible because um, there are some ex specific accessibility issues with tables. Um, also use descriptive hyperlinks. Um, so rather than using kind of the hyperlinks like I've given you them in the chat there, you want to use a descriptive hyperlink. Um, unfortunately, the chat does not allow me to use descriptive hyperlinks, but you can in your document. Um, so if it's a document that's meant to be printed out, using URLs um, would be preferable because if someone's going to print it out, they can't click on a descriptive link. But if you're um, meaning for students to access it electronically, then the electronic version should have descriptive links. So for example, um, instead of having a whole URL spelled out, which a screen reader would read out the entire URL, um, you want to have a descriptive link. So um, for one of these links here that I've given you. So niu.edu slash GSRC. Um, the link would say Gender and Sexuality Resource Center. That's how it would, how it would look if you're looking at the link. Um, and then that link, you would click on it and it would go to that URL, but it doesn't show the URL on the screen. Um, and if anyone has a question about how to do that, I can show you how to do that too. Um, also avoid using blank cells for formatting or paragraph marks for spacing between lines or paragraphs. Um, so blank cells, if it's in like a spreadsheet or um, in a table or formatting marks in a Word document can create a sort of a stutter sound on a screen reader. Um, and that could be kind of irritating for your students. So it's better to use um, cell spacing, paragraph and line spacing when you're creating documents. So, you know, go to the line spacing um, under the paragraph feature in Microsoft Word, for example, and add extra space after paragraphs um, to create that white space rather than pressing enter a bunch of times. Um, also, as I mentioned before, you can utilize accessibility check tools. Um, most programs have their own accessibility checkers. Um, the availability of those depend on the version that you have. So you've got Microsoft's um, accessibility checker, but for Adobe Acrobat, you need Adobe Acrobat X Pro, um, which I mentioned you can get through uh, Do It, Department of IT at NIU if you have an NIU computer, um, so you can access that accessibility checker, or you can use um, the Blackboard Ally accessibility um, resources in Blackboard. Um, and then you can also add an accessibility disclaimer notice, so that tells readers who to or to contact you for assistance with your document if they have difficulty reading or understanding it or if they have difficulty um, with accessibility issues they can contact you and then you can also give them information about the disability resource center as well and their services all right so that was all a lot of information um, does anyone have any questions i know that's a lot um, any specific questions that you have about your course syllabus or questions about any of the information that I've provided today? Like I said, I'll give you some of these, these resources in a follow-up email this afternoon. But if you have questions for me, um, I will mute myself and let you think. You can post to the chat or you can unmute yourself and Um, that's a good question, Lynn, um, for your own computer. I would check check with uh, IT. Let me get you their contact information. Um, they might be able to add that for you to your personal computer. 
So I'll give you their number um, and their email and their website. So there's that. I think we do have an accessible syllabus template. Let me find that for you and I will send it to you in my follow-up email. There we go. Let me just do a quick check and see if I can find that for you really quickly. You're welcome. Let's see here. We do have one. I will, it'll take me a little bit of digging and I'll find that and I'll send that in my follow up email in. Thanks, Erin. Any other questions or any other resources that you'd like me to share with you? Okay, well, if no one has any other questions, thank you so much for attending today's presentation. If you think of anything, feel free to respond to my follow-up email um, with any individual questions that you have. Um, but otherwise, uh, have a great semester and um, feel free to contact Seidel or me personally with any issues. Thanks.